So guys, in the last few videos, we've been talking extensively about cooling systems in Subarus. We've talked about water pumps. We've talked about uh, radiator replacement. We've done a lot on the cooling system. And today is no different. We're continuing talking about cooling systems on Subarus. Now, don't fret. As the temperatures are getting warmer, we're going to start shifting gears and talking about air conditioning systems because I'm sure a lot of you are ready to get your car blowing cold air again as the temperatures rise. So as the temperatures rise, we want to keep our engines cool and we want to keep our transmissions cool. We don't want to overheat the engine. We don't want to overheat the transmission. So in our last video, we did a replacement on a radiator that had failed in a 2013 Impreza, and that is this radiator right here. Now, it has the same radiator as my 2013 Crosstrek here. Now, some of you keen-eyed viewers in that video in the comments mentioned that, hey, where are the transmission cooler lines? There's no barbs in this transmission, nor are there cooler lines going to the transmission. Now see, that makes this a much easier radiator replacement, much like a manual transmission car where you just have the coolant hoses and the fans to worry about. You don't have the coolers down here, the cooler lines from the transmission. So some of you may be wondering, well, where does the modern Subaru get the cooling for their CVT fluid, if not inside the radiator like Subarus of old. Well, most of the new CVTs, not all of them, have something different. They have something called a CVT fluid cooler with warming function. I know it's an odd name, but if you look, it's actually right here. It's that cylindrical aluminum piece with hoses coming out of it. Now, what this is, those of you familiar with oil coolers on Subarus, especially on the Turbo and the H6 models, it looks very similar, but it's a little bit larger in a different location, bolted here on the side of the transmission instead of underneath the engine or uh, on top of the engine between the engine block and the oil filter. So some of you may notice that, hey, you've got two different thermostats sitting there. You've got a normal sized one for a Subaru engine, and you got this little itty bitty baby one. What's that about? Well, modern Subarus, again, most of them, not all of them, have two thermostats. One is for your engine coolant and one is for your CVT. So this thermostat is located in the normal location that we always see it on a Subaru right next to or behind or underneath the water pump near the lower coolant hose. It will be underneath that water pump as we talked about in the other video on replacing water pumps on the F-Series engines. Now, this little tiny thermostat, where is this located, you may be wondering, and how does this help cool down or warm up the CVT fluid? Well, this is located in your coolant crossover pipe. If you're looking at the top of the engine, then take manifold here. Uh, most Subarus since the EJ series, actually even older than that, have a coolant crossover pipe. And it's a pipe that goes between one side of the block case to the other and then normally terminates into the upper radiator hose here. It just runs right there across the engine block and normally the back end feeds one end of your heater core. So in the coolant crossover pipe here, if we look right under here, if we can get it to focus, Right there is your thermostat housing, right there, for that little baby thermostat. Now that coolant hose there and that thermostat feeds in and around to one of the main hoses for the CVT fluid cooler warmer. So what it does is it takes in engine coolant, circulates it through, and then returns it back out to the cooling system. Whereas you have two lines there from your CVT bringing fluid out of the transmission into the cooler and out of the cooler and back into the transmission. So, some of you may be thinking, well, why is it a canister style like an oil cooler rather than in the radiator now? And that's because it has dual functionality where it both cools the fluid and it warms the fluid. Now with the old school, so to say, setup of a transmission cooler in the radiator, that served one purpose and that was taking heat out of the fluid, cooling it. That's all it could do. But with modern cars, now we have the warming function. Well, why would we want to warm our transmission fluid all these years we've been trying to cool it off? Why are we heating it up now? So with 
a transmission, especially on the CVT, when the fluid is cold. Like most fluids, it's thicker and higher viscosity. So our CVT fluid has to get to a minimum temperature before the torque converter can be locked lowering your RPM on the highway and lessening your fuel consumption. So they added the warming feature to help get the temperature of the fluid up to the operational temperature much quicker, allowing the torque converter to lock much quicker and lowering that fuel consumption and lowering emissions. It's all about the EPA. It's all about the emissions. It's all about the fuel economy when we get down to it. So that's something new we're seeing on lots of vehicles, not just Subarus, but warmers on transmission fluid so that your transmission torque converter can lock sooner and it can reach operational temperature a lot sooner. All of you that have older Subarus with the old 4EAT, for example, I'm sure a lot of you experienced really hard shifting in that transmission when it was very, very cold out side like 30 degrees or colder when you got the engine warmed up and start driving you probably noticed some very harsh shifting because the transmission jacks up the line pressure when the fluid is cold to keep it from slipping so with the warmer we get that fluid up to temperature much faster and we don't have as much issue so you may be wondering well how often do i need to replace these thermostats are they a normal maintenance item well a good rule of thumb as there's not really much guideline in the factory service manual is replace your thermostats plural both of them whenever you service your cooling system which should be done every eight to ten years or eighty to a hundred thousand miles when using the blue subaru super coolant that is a long life coolant so i'm sure a lot of you are wondering well can i put an auxiliary old school type transmission cooler on my cvt equipped subaru just for some extra cooling in case of uh, towing or you know spirited driving say in the case of a cvt equipped wrx so the WRX does use this same style cooler warmer as the Crosstrek, Forester, etc. Now Mishimoto and others make aftermarket kits where you hook into this cooler warmer, come up to the front with an old school style transmission cooler. Now that's all good and fun, but the problem is you lose the functionality, the engineering behind the warmer function when you do that because the fluid will flow out of the cooler warmer and then out to the cooler. If the fluid is still cold, it's not gonna have enough time to warm up or if it, ca it gathers any heat in the warming function, it's gonna lose it when it comes out to that big cooler out here. So you're really just gonna make the fluid run very cold and you're actually gonna lose some of the benefit in getting it up to temperature because it's gonna take much, much longer for it to get to that optimal temperature with that massive cooler up there. Now I did see online where someone built a kit. Well, I don't know if they sell it as a kit, but they built a cooler setup for a Subaru and it was done, uh, as I would say, uh, a proper install. They used a thermostatic, a uh, fluid thermostat in line between the stock cooler and the auxiliary big transmission cooler. And that thermo fluid thermostat has a block off in it where fluid would exit the cooler, come to that thermostat. If the fluid was under 180 degrees, it would be directed back to the transmission as it would be normally with the cooler warmer. Now, once the fluid hits 180 degrees, I believe 160 degrees is where the torque converter starts locking up for temperature. Once it hits 180 degrees, that thermostatic valve opens up and allows the fluid to flow out to the cooler and then back through as it should. Now, I would say that is the way that you should do it if you're gonna do it. Put a fluid thermostat in between so you don't lose your warming functionality. These aftermarket companies that put these coolers on, you're losing that. You're just gonna have very cool fluid and it's gonna take forever for the fluid to reach operational temperature, which is great if you're out there racing the crap out of a WRX with a CVT, which why the hell would you race the crap out of a CVT WRX? But anyway, you know, it'll keep the transmission fluid very cool, but it won't let it get up to temperature, which is just as bad. So there you go. I'll try to play some links in the description of the video to that fluid thermostat and some other things that can help you build a auxiliary cooler setup if you choose to on your CVT equipped Subaru.
There you go, guys. There is a quick rundown explanation of the CVT fluid cooler with warming function on the modern Subarus. Why you have two thermostats on your newer Subarus and what some options are for modifying for towing or if you're wanting to uh, do more lively uh, driving with it and keep your temperatures down in your transmission, check out some of those aftermarket auxiliary kits. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you all in the next one.